So this is a defective Ruxu lithium iron phosphate drop in lead acid replacement. And they sent it to me because they didn't want to send it back to China. So we're going to try to open it up and see what's wrong with it. And I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. I'm guessing it's a BMS failure. But if one of the cells shorted or something, that would be super cool. So first we're going to check the voltage. 12.3 volts. I'm going to try charging it up real quick. So I connected a power supply with 14.3 volts. And at the terminals, we have... 14.3 volts, but guess what? There are no amps going into the battery. So what I'm guessing is that the BMS has disconnected it. And usually if it's in safety mode, this will wake it up. So there's something wrong inside. Guys, there is a bead of glue along this whole case. <gasps> it smells bad. It smells really bad. You guys, you won't believe it. This is very cheaply made. <gasps> was this disconnected? I think it was, and it's the balance lead. Let's connect this and see if we have a good voltage at the terminals. All right, so the balance lead is in 13 volts, you guys. It was just a bad cable. That's all that there was. So you see this balance cable? It was just disconnected. It might have been knocked out from shipping, but they should glue that down. That should not happen. So let's inspect the other stuff. First, we have 14 gauge wires. We have four of them supplying a 100 amp limit BMS. And then we have five wires going out to the main negative terminal. And then we have the main positive, but it's inside the battery. So we need to open it up a little bit more. But before we dig inside this battery, we need to deactivate the BMS. So we're going to disconnect the balance lead. And what's tripping me out is this whole battery is held together with adhesives. And this is touching the cells. I do not like that. There should be some form of barrier. And what's crazy is that the MOSFETs are connected to this plate as a heat sink. But this is attached directly to the cells with adhesive. I don't know if I can recommend this anymore. It did pass the test. But this will not last a very long time. This is not a good design. And it has a temperature sensor, but they told me that it doesn't have low temperature disconnect. But it does have high temperature disconnect. So that's what this is for. Why don't they just program a low temp disconnect if you already have a temperature sensor? Also, they only have one. Most of the more expensive lithium iron phosphate drop-in replacements will have multiple temperature sensors throughout the whole battery. So it can register a very accurate temperature reading but only having one is not that great god this is not that good guys and they have these foam squares holding everything together but i really like these cells so we have to get them out and build another battery it would be so cool so we need to slide this out of here but it's glued in there i can't get it out and it smells really bad. It's the adhesive for this foam. It's not good to be breathing this stuff. And if I use a knife or a tool to cut through this, I can hit the battery terminal. So it's very difficult. Actually, that would totally work. Look at this. And it would totally miss the wires by just a tiny bit. Also, here's the number on the BMS. So if we could look that up on Alibaba and try to find this, that would be great. I hate opening up stuff like this. I used to open up toys when I was a kid. And it's just so dangerous. But I want those lithium iron phosphate cells. God damn it. Okay, we did it. We've got 100 amp hour cells for free because they thought it was defective. And I get it for free. How cool is that? I'm so stoked right now. We just need to open it up. I'm gonna throw this foam out because it smells so bad. I cannot have this in my house. Oh, we have battery terminals, so be careful if you guys are doing this at home. This is not, this is not safe. <sighs> What's tripping me out is how small this thing is. This is aluminum case cells, so they're small and light, but look at how big a Battleborn is. These have the same capacity, but this is cylindrical, and then we have a case, and it has different circuit boards inside that all the cylindrical cells are spot welded to, but look how small. It's just crazy to see this. We've tested other aluminum case 
lithium iron phosphate cells before, but it just blows my mind how tiny and lightweight they are. So there's not a whole lot I have to do except for remove this and add the new BMS. Oh, this is a separate port BMS. So this is for a charger. I'm just going to use this one and call it a day. And actually this is a high quality lug. Uh oh. All right guys, check this out. This is a funny one. So this is the soldering job to bring four 14 gauge wires to this massive honker. Look at this. Okay, to give them credit, they got it to the right temperature because it's nice and shiny and it conforms to all the wires, but this is just not what you wanna see in a battery that's supposed to last 10 years. Absolutely not. There has to be a better way. There has to be. But I actually like the lug that they're using. This is high quality, it's very thick. And check this out, this is seven gauge wire, you guys. I haven't seen that before. Let's open up the other end and see what it looks like. So this one looks better and it's nice and shiny and they got it to the right temperature, but I don't like it. But everything else is really nice. These are good cells. These are the bus bars that come with them and they're nice and thick. And the balance leads look really nicely done. So everything else is good. I just do not like this BMS. I'm not a fan of this thing. I'm surprised that they did not cover up the bottom of this, you guys. This is a heat sink, and they put it directly on these cells. That is illogical. It will heat up the cells, and there will cause degradation on one side. That's just not good. How could they do something to such a beautiful battery? <laughs> So now we need to slap this bad boy on here. You know what, these are the same lugs that they're using over here. How the steel is folded in half in the copper. No, it has a different number. They look very similar though. Something I just realized is that the balance lead, the negative is on the opposite side of the balance lead for this BMS. That means we need to swap all these wires out so it's going the other way. Actually, we're just gonna use the Dally BMS balance lead because it'll fit on there and it'll just take a couple seconds to add it. And these are our inverter cables so that we can charge and discharge this battery. So this BMS can pull 100 amps and at 12 volts, that's 1200 watts. So we can easily power up a pretty big load with this. So we're gonna lead by example and charge up the capacitors on this inverter. Oh, we have to add a Hall effect sensor. All right guys, check it out. We have a Hall effect sensor these are the inverter and charger cables. These are gonna to go to the battery so that the Hall Effect sensor has power. And then we're gonna charge up the capacitors and then connect the inverter. We're gonna be good little kids and use a resistor to charge up those capacitors. Oh, look at it, it's working. I haven't used this for like a couple months now. Now the battery charger is connected and we're pushing only 10 amps into this battery. So now we have the inverter connected to the load and we can increase the load. And now I just realized, why am I doing this test? I know that these cells will pull full capacity and that the results will be very boring. But we did learn why the battery is not working. Just a single balance lead, not plugged in all of the way and it pulled out through shipping or whatever, turned it off. It was at 12.3 volts. When we plugged it back in, we had over 13 volts. And right now we're charging it past 13.46. So in like two hours, it'd be fully charged. It's at like about 80% right now. And we learned how bad the build quality is. I don't know if I should have these on the website. I know a lot of people like to save money and they wanna save, you know, 150 bucks over buying a Battleborn or any of the other lithium iron phosphate drop-in replacements right now. But why would you do that? You can easily spend more money, get a better battery. You'd have something that can last for a very long time and it has low temperature disconnect. This one does not have it. So yeah, I hope this is a lesson for my viewers in that you need to spend more money. People get mad at me when I show more expensive options. They're like, we can't afford that, Will. But I'm like, yeah, but look what happens when you don't spend the money, so. I don't know, if you want a system that lasts 10 to 20 years, you're gonna have to drop a lot of money, but if you want something that will last one year and then you'll have to replace it, then buy, you know, the cheap stuff. That's how electrical stuff works. But I must also add that used lithium iron phosphate cells are totally fine. If you're building your own raw cell system and you are adding the safety features that you need, that's totally fine and you can do it for very cheap. 
but buying some of these ready build options is not a good idea. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm pretty frustrated. I can't believe that it's so cheaply made. So fast forward to the next day and I do not like this battery and we are removing it from the website. We did do a capacity test some months ago and it had very, very impressive results. And these are really good cells. So you're gonna get full capacity when it's new. But having a BMS slapped on there is not a good idea. So what I recommend everybody doing that did buy these is to get your own BMS, especially like one with a low temp cutoff and everything's programmable, and hooking it up yourself. Because how this battery is right now is not logical. And what's funny is I had all these batteries on my website and I tested them with capacity tests and they worked, right? But now that we're opening them up and we're testing them and we're getting defective units and seeing what's wrong, the only battery I have on there now is the battle board. And it's funny, I'm not trying to be a Battleborn fanboy, I'm trying to find a reason to hate everything. And the Battleborns keep working. So now the next challenge is I want competition. So we're gonna start buying other lithium iron phosphate batteries, ones that I'm not sponsored or affiliated by, and we're gonna try to beat the Battleborn. Because right now they are just on top of it for the price. Because you also have, you know, the Trojan Trillium, you have the Relyon series, but nobody's gonna spend thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to get the Life Blue one. Um, there's also a new Lion Energy one. And what's cool about Lion Energy, we have found some defects and problems with them. But every time I complain, they're like, okay, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it right now. We're gonna improve everything. And they're so attentive and receptive. Some of these companies I complain and they're like, well, too bad, so sad, whatever. And then they just leave and then they're mad that I gave them a bad review. I'm like, no, you guys, if you can fix it and make a better battery, people would be very happy. And I would be happy too, because I would actually have better products to recommend. So that's the game plan. We need to find something that will beat our Battleborns and that's the next challenge. And I hope you guys like this video. I can't believe what we found in here. That's absolutely crazy. So yeah, I learned a lot. I can't believe it. So I'll talk to you guys soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye.